Hi everyone, I hope you're good. We're gonna jump straight into our yoga practice and get started on all fours. So whenever you're ready, you wanna make sure you've got shoulders above wrists and hips stacked above your knees. Relax your feet there behind you, letting your toes point away. And you wanna make sure you push away the floor, navel to spine. Start rounding the back here into your cat stretch, letting your head drop down and your tailbone move towards the backs of the knees. Then on your next breath, you're gonna allow your chin to lift up, your sit bones to reach up towards the sky, your shoulders to pull back, and your arms still straight. Then again, moving into that cat stretch to round the spine, and then move it here into cow pose. So you go between the two postures, keeping it nice and light. Please close the eyes, so move away from what it looks like and into what it feels like. It's nothing worse than when you're doing yoga and you're sort of more preoccupied with, you know, what is it, what am I looking like? Oh, I don't like the way I look. And, oh, look, there's a roll there. And, oh, it just takes you away from the goodness of, you know, the practice and what yoga can do for us. Okay, so next up, I'm going to go on to all fours, a back again. And into downward facing dogs. So tuck the toes underneath, lift your hips up nice and high and push away the floor, keep the neck super duper long. Now with your shoulders, I just want you to roll them away from your ears. I know they feel like they barely move, but you want that external rotation of the shoulders so they're not kind of crunching up towards your ears and crunching up your neck. And I would come up really high up onto the balls of the feet because I find this helps, so it gives you more length here in the spine. And it also means that you're not kind of dumping your heels down. And then on your next exhale, you can lower your heels just a little bit or maybe fully. So that way, when you inhale, lift up really high up onto the balls of the feet. On your exhale, lower down. And that way, there's this like nice stretch that's slowly happening here for the hamstrings, for the calves, for the ankles without, you know, like it really feeling that it's just pulling <laughs> that poor elastic band. Okay, so whenever you're ready, we're going to walk the toes towards the back going into plank pose. And I push away the floor, keep the shoulders moving back and away from the ears, and then gently sway side to side just a little bit. And of course, you can be a mermaid plank like this. That's absolutely fine. Don't feel like you've got to do a full plank. Just make sure you're pressing down through the juicy parts of your thumbs and your fingertips as well. All right, back to center. With this one, I'm going to come down onto the knees, so I'm back into a mermaid plank. Lower your chest and heart all the way down. Connect your body towards the floor. Point your toes behind you, and now lift up into cobra pose. Lift your chest and heart. Roll your shoulders back. Keep pressing down through the legs, keep lifting the chin. <sighs> nice deep breaths. And then you're gonna push the bum back and lift straight up into downward facing dog again. Okay, so we've got another couple rounds of those. Walk the toes towards the back going into plank or your plank. If you're in full plank like me, you'll be able to push from the toes. Come down into your Chaturanga Dandasana, then lift up into Cobra Pose. Okay, and same again, push the bum back into downward facing dog. Whew. And into plank pose. Your variation doesn't have to look like mine. Remember, push from the toes, down into Chaturanga Dandasana, up into Cobra Rising, and lift that chin. Lift your boobs up towards the ceiling. Good. And then from here, we're gonna push it back into child's pose and just allow the whole body to melt downward. So it might be that you bring your knees a little bit wider, for example. Maybe you've got the um, hands ahead or maybe the hands on top of one another, resting the forehead down. So just kind of see what feels good from there. And then next up, you're gonna rise up and you're gonna take your left foot forward. So it might be a bit of, you know, grabbing onto the leg and pulling it into position there, which is fine. Just don't be too hard on yourself, obviously. And I've got the hands shoulder width apart and the left foot is by the outside of the left hand, okay? So the hip is nice and open. Gently sway side to side. If that's too much, just holding stillness here, just allowing the hips to open up and breathe, basically. Now what we're going to do is find our centre and we're going to lift the left hand up towards the sky. So you should have like your body away from this front leg. Now this left hand or the elbow is going to come down towards the floor, may or may not touch, and then lift it back up towards the ceiling. So nice, deep breaths happening as we do this. If you find sometimes like me with this right wrist, for example, was kind of feeling it after it all of this so far, then take that right wrist slightly forwards a few inches there, a couple of inches ahead, just takes the load off of it. Okay, so we've got one more, 
Then we're gonna change sides, all right? So I come down, push the bum back, and then just change sides, all right? So take your time getting there. You've got the right foot forwards. Like I said, it's by the outside of that right hand, so the hands are shoulder width apart, allowing the hips to open. As long as the back feels all right to do so, then I would kind of sway out side to side. It feels quite nice. It's quite rhythmic there. Really good for hips and inner groins. And then, like I said, if you need to take this left hand forwards a bit more, then go for it. Right hand up towards the sky. And we've got elbow coming down towards the floor and then lifting up. So really nice mobility exercise here. Great for the hips, the back, the chest, the shoulders. It's a real sort of all rounder, this one. I think this one is definitely my sort of go-to daily or every other day to keep me mobile because keeping mobile is key just not losing that sort of ability to to move and stretch out all right so come back down and we're going to push that leg back now we want to come up into downward facing dog all right come up really high up onto the walls of the feet and slowly walk the feet forwards towards the hands into forward fold Bend through the knees, let the body hang down nice and heavy. So you should be able to kind of wriggle downwards towards the floor with kind of by encouraging like the shoulders to move down, the head to move down, the hips to lift up nice and high. You might even be able to straighten the legs a bit more or fully here at this point. But ragdolling down is a really good way to go for when you're trying to allow the backs of the legs to open up and have a nice stretch as well as the back as well. And if you want to, you can hold onto the backs of the legs if they feel as comfortable at this stage, bringing the elbows in alignment with the shoulders, the shoulders to move back and away from the ears. Sometimes I'll take a nice walk on the spot as well because that's really nice for the legs, taking any tension out of the legs too. All right, and then back to center, hands onto the shins. We're gonna inhale, lift up halfway to Ardha Uttanasana, and on your exhale, forward fall back down. Again, inhaling to lift up. Exhaling to lower down. And one more time, inhaling to raise up. Exhaling to lower down. Bend through the knees, let the arms drop down nice and heavy again, and slowly round up the spine, coming up to standing. Roll the shoulders back, reach the hands up, and bring the hands to come down to prayer. Nice job. So you want to be somewhere at the head whoop, of your yoga mat, if I can gain control of clothing. You want to be in Tadasana, standing nice and tall, so feet hip distance apart, lengthen your tailbone down towards the heels, bring the hands to come to prayer, inhale, reach the hands up towards the sky, on your exhale, forward fold down, inhaling, pushing away from the shins, Ardha Uttanasana, exhaling to forward fold back down, bend through the knees, we're going to step back with that left foot, so it's really important the feet are hip distance apart, front knee just above the front ankle, and slowly rise up. So you can either have hands on hips or hands reaching up towards the sky in your high crescent. So what I want you to do is make sure that you've got your hands just above your shoulders for this one. So don't flare out your ribs too much. In fact, I want you to focus on trying to hug your ribs in a little bit and from your ribs to your hips to kind of come a bit kind of together. <laughs> There's like this togetherness here, trying to link with that core and keep that healthy back. Because now we're going to straighten out this front leg as best as you can. Obviously being mindful of the front knee if there's any like injuries going on and you're going up and down. So really push away from the floor using that front foot. Nice deep breaths, full awareness of your movement. Softening the face and the jaw muscles. We'll do a couple more. Okay. Now, once you're back here into your lunge, I want you to take the left hand down towards the floor, the right hand up towards the sky. Now, push into the back heel slightly. If you find you're really wobbly, I lower the back knee down. Okay, so just see how that feels on you there. We're going to change sides. We've got the right hand on the inside of the right foot. Pivot the back heel down and open up left hand up towards the sky. So this right arm is connected to the inside of that right leg, by the way. All right. 
And then from here, we're gonna slowly come down with the hands, pivot here on the ball of the back foot, and you're gonna step forwards into forward fold. All right, so marry up your feet so they're hip distance apart, hands to shins, inhale, lifting up halfway, exhaling to forward fold down, bend through the knees and step back with that right foot, feet hip distance apart, all right, front knee just above that front ankle, we've changed legs, so we've got left leg forward, and whenever you're ready, slowly rising up, so you're here, whoop, in your high lunge, so make sure you've got your hands just above your shoulders, hugging the ribs in, keeping that back nice and healthy, and straighten out that front leg, and slowly come down, so yep, wibbly wobbliness all the way with this one, it's a nice little challenge, for our balance and of course if you're like me you're going up and down already nice deep breaths you know if I've got more time definitely about sort of 20 25 on each leg or do 10 then switch and 10 again you get the idea all right so I'm gonna come down with the right hand up with the left and you want this body facing out towards your nine o'clock. Uh, but this one, you want to make sure you're kind of moving away from this front leg as if you're trying to sort of find a wall behind you there with your shoulders. Push into the back heel. Remember, you can always lower the back knee down if it gets a bit too much. Now we're going to change. So we've got left hand on the inside of the left foot. Pivot the back heel down. All right. And now open up so we've got right hand up towards the sky. So this left arm is on the inside of this left leg. You really want to push into the back heel. Try not to stick your bum out. Try and lengthen your tailbone towards the heel there behind you. Good job. Then you've got both hands coming down. Pivot here on the ball of the back foot and step forward into your forward fold again. So you might be able to get a bit deeper in your forward fold, you might notice. You might be able to straighten the legs a bit more. You might feel that, oh, actually, you know, getting a little bit deeper into this pose rather than feeling like really hunched up in this. We want the body nice and long. It's not just all about the legs. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale to forward fold back down. <sighs> Bend through the knees. Drop the arms nice and heavy. And slowly rise up to standing. Roll the shoulders back and away. Reach the hands up. And slowly bring the hands to come down to prayer. Nice job. Give everything a nice little wriggle, shake out, maybe roll around the hips. Okay, so this one you're going to come into a standing posture. So you want the feet, um, I'll just stand to the side of it, I'm not sure. So we've got the feet um, hip distance apart, toes facing forwards, okay? We lengthen the tailbone, bring the hands to come to prayer. And we're gonna slowly come down into chair pose. So we've got the knees are bending, as you can see. I pull the knees and the shins back, so I don't want my knees kind of masking my toes. And as I'm doing this, I really wanna kind of drive down through into the heels, navel to spine, try not to be hunched up. And if you're going further down than me, which is fine, then you wanna make sure you're going down via your legs and not through your back, okay? So just hold it right there. Nice deep breaths the whole time. See if you can lower down just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Now, you're gonna come out of it slightly, so just a little bit. You're gonna shift your weight over towards your left-hand side, and you're gonna slowly bring your right knee up towards you, so in towards your body or your chest, so that right foot's hovering away from the floor. Then you're gonna change sides, so plant down that right foot, and now just a little bit of weight shifting so I can get that left leg off the floor. Keep that standing leg, leg bent. Change again. So I've got your, should have your right knee up. Now you're gonna change your hand position so you can kind of cradle this right leg, open up the right knee without force of course, and see if you can position the outside edge of your right ankle on top of your left thigh. And if you're like, no, that's not happening now, then just grab the top part of your foot around the back of that left knee. You can still join in with this one. See how you go. Keep that hip nice and open and the knee will follow. So we don't want to force the knee to position. Hands to prayer. And you're in your standing pose. And we're going to slowly come out so I can, you can use the hands if you want to, to kind of slide the leg out of position and then give the legs a little rest. Okay, onto the other side. So we've got feet hip distance apart. Come down 
into chair pose. Shift just a little bit of weight over towards that right hand side. Free up that left leg. You can see how I kind of cradle this leg, opening out the hip, not forcing the knee or anything. Outside edge of that left ankle on top of your right thigh and come down into that single chair. Nice deep breaths. Some people call this one standing pigeon. Don't get caught up in all the names, doesn't matter. Now, here I can feel that I'm kind of flaring the ribs. So what I'm gonna do is hug the ribs in and make more of that core connection there. Good. Nice deep breaths. And I find that a speck to focus on is so much better than kind of looking around everywhere. And of course to come out, relax the feet and come down. Let's come down to a seated position. So I'm gonna have both legs out there in front of you. Flex the feet so that way you're not kind of flopping the legs or anything like that. You wanna sit yourself up nice and tall from the base of the spine. Fold your left leg in, over the right leg it goes and try and ground that left foot into the floor. Sit yourself up nice and tall and wrap your right arm around your left leg or push the right arm away from the leg entirely up to you. Then start moving your body round towards your nine o'clock and looking over your shoulder towards the back there somewhere for this lovely rinse out here of the spine. Then you're going to make your way back to centre and you're going to change sides from here. So you've got left leg straight, right leg folds in, over it goes. Sit yourself nice and tall so you can see I kind of wriggle the buttocks. Left arm hugging or pushing away from this leg, start spinning your body round towards your right hand side, towards your three o'clock. And nice deep breaths. This back hand is close to the base of the spine. So twists are so good for us, especially if you're kind of stuck doing, you know, lots of desk work or kind of hunched over, kind of looking after the kids or homeschooling right now. There's a lot of that. So postures like that really, really help. Whenever you're ready, Sealing off your session today, just crisscross the legs over or sit nice and comfortable, hands there onto the knees, close the eyes, sit yourself up tall and I just want you to again find that imaginary wall behind you, it's somewhere, try not to sort of lean forwards, I tend to do that, I know a lot of other people do as well, inhale reach the hands up towards the sky, slowly lower the thumbs down towards the third eye for your vision and dreams, down towards the mouth and throat for clear speech, good conversation, immunity. Down towards the chest and heart for love, compassion. And finally down towards the lower part of the belly for good instincts, fire and healthy digestion. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining in and I will see you next time on the yoga mat. Stay safe everyone. Bye.